I probably present you to uh, once upon a time got the vision to start this company. Uh, Gustav Larsson, he was an engineer, and you have Asar Gabrielsson here. He was the economist and salesman. They both met each other in 1924 in Stockholm in a restaurant. Maybe, of course, that is the picture, the, that kind of memory. They were eating, by the way, not f fish like the photos. It, they were eating crayfish. That is a popular dish in Sweden. And still uh, so popular in some departments at the Volvo organization, eating uh, uh, crayfish in August. That is the normal time of the year to eat that. Crayfish parties are great. Yeah. Uh, Lots of uh, schnapps and... Oh, of course. Akavit is, of yeah, course, uh, one or two. Yeah. Only, only for the adults, <laughs> not for the young people. <laughs> so they had um, an idea about one family, one car. That was the, 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 the talk, the shop talk, once upon a time, 1924 in August. They were working mates at the company here in Gothenburg called SKF. SKF making bearings, you know. It's a very global company, started in 1907 around this spherical, spherical ball bearing that I got the patent of it at the time. Uh, all the SQF started around about um, the cotton industry. The cotton industry is kind of the first industry here in Gothenburg. And because the clay in from the big, big river outside here, uh, the, the clay is a big, big problem for us in Gothenburg. So even though the cotton machine were instable, so there were a lot of interruption in the product, in production. So the, the young engineer Sven Wink, we still started to think about to fix the, to minimize the, the production problem. So he invented the spherical ball bearing. And the SKF started in 1907 and went well and earned money from day one. So fantastic company, global company today, uh, headquartered here in Gothenburg, 4,000 employees just here in Gothenburg. So you can understand it's an engineering company, uh, very important for us, Sweden and of course Gothenburg. They are working mates, but uh, Gustav Larsson, he moved up to Stockholm, uh, working for a um, uh, subcontractor to SKF. So there, therefore the meeting was in Stockholm 1924 and the, the vision to start a, a factory, starting manufacturing cars. And that's the idea of starting a factory around about a car for a family was not so uh, bad at, at all because we imported like a, a lot of tea forts re, re, uh, through Denmark up to Sweden. So we had cars, we had um, also trucks on the roads here in Sweden, so the idea of um, uh, manufacturing a car of their own, it was not so. We have the steel, we have uh, the engineering, we got construction equipment uh, to do a, a good car. So they, the both gentlemen started to make up drawings in his uh, flat in uh, Rodmansgatan in Stockholm, in his private um, uh, house in Stockholm, and he took help from the engineers he knew in Stockholm to make up the drawings for uh, the cars, even though also other vehicles. It will, I will soon tell you which vehicle was so important for uh, the both gentlemen to survive into the future. Actually, it was not the car I can uh, present you just a little right now. Uh, they made also 10 concept cars uh, all together with their pocket money and, and maybe from, from friends who thought that was a good idea. And they had decided to name the car uh, Larson. And Larson is, you can absolutely use it in the Scandinavian market, of course. It's, uh, it's no problem at all. The division going export in like today 200 um, uh, countries around the world, that was, that, I, I don't think that was on the mind from the beginning. But uh, they went to SQF, asked if they were, uh, could help them to start this company, and uh, SQF said yes to this idea. They saw the, the construction, uh, the drawings, they saw the concept cars, and they also decided that the name should be Volvo, and if you Google on when Volvo started, actually, so it stands in the Google information, 1915. That was uh, once upon a time the year that 
Escraf registered a company, not in use, not used it, but registered this company and it's Volvo. And it's so super name because Volvo means I roll. So 1915, this registration was made, and uh, Escraf said, yes, we use that name for this good business. Uh, companies like Escraf, um, they, of course, got uh, competitors right here in Gothenburg as well. Um, they were Nordic bearing company. They didn't have the same good few, um, uh, fortune to, to survive. They went bankruptcy, and Escraf bought that company. And through that uh, Bankruptcy company Volvo had also possible to move into a factory right here in Lundby. It's a part of the island of Hisingen, and it's still uh, used in, in the premises of AB Volvo. They used even 100, nearly 100 years later the same factory, but not for uh, manufacturing cars. The, the funny thing with that uh, factory, it was the assembly line is from, from the storage number five and through holes through in the, in the floor, you can actually put the car uh, uh, to the ground floor and proudly present you behind you here, my gentleman, the open van four. It was presented on 14th of April. That's the birthday of the first um, car was these two gentlemen launched. 14th of April 1927. It's exactly very close to um, T Ford, the Chrysler, the Chevrolet, or Citroën. This, this, the, the architect, the designer of cars at that time, even 2023, they are looking upon each other very much. And also the possibility to, to build a car. Uh, it was a wooden frame, and through the wooden frame you have the, um, the, the, the steel plates outside. So it is like this. So if you can see in the old T Ford photos, it's very similar to this car. But even though it's a Volvo, and um, uh, even our climate says that you should be with a roof, <laughs> and some months, half a year later, it was a PV, the name you can imagine. You, is we have an old car, more or less, PV, and then the number series. What does the P stand for? Mm. P open, stands open. for passenger, and this stands for open. Open. Mm. Okay. PV, PV, passenger van, or a vehicle. Yeah. And uh, 200 uh, cars was built, and that is not, not enough to be survive into the future. The, the, um, the idea from the both gentlemen should be like 1,000 cars should be built, but uh, 4,800 Swedish crown, that is like 500 euros. It's a lot of money for my grandfather or grandfather's father. So have just a luxury car standing on the road outside your um, uh, department, your apartment. It is not that kind of car you, um, at that time, 20s, in the end of the 20s. So, just only 200 cars was um, built. In the front, you can see the iron mark. The idea of Volvo's badge or logo, it is the iron mark, but um, technical to fix that um, iron mark into the front, you have to have the diagonal uh, um, ribbon. So uh, today you can say it's a booth is together. And then now we have this circle, of course, but. The, the main idea from the beginning is the iron mark, yeah, just, to, just to know it. But the, the, uh, the, uh, the ribbon is so important in our logo today. Uh, by me here, it is the original desk from the both gentlemen in, at the, in the office they had. So uh, even though the shares is also the original once upon a time. And as I said, the, uh, the factory is still in uh, AB Volvo's premises. Uh, and the brush over there is not the, the uh, oldest one. You can see this brand new. It was kind of an internal uh, signal system to knock um, five, five knock in the floor. Secretary Anderson was coming into the office or um, three knocks. You have maybe the engineer person coming up to the office, to the gentleman. So this was the main idea of the brush over there. Mm. Uh, and from the very beginning, the company called Penta is providing a Volvo with, en uh, with an engine. And you, hear, you can see it over here. 
Uh, it's a penta outside Gothenburg, east, uh, not so far actually from, from uh, Gothenburg. You find the, this town, Skövde, and it's still very important uh, making engines for, uh, for all the vehicles, in, the main supplier of the uh, engine. It's 28 horsepower, and that's a four cylinder, and uh, <coughs> an iron cast engine that should be the a real Volvo has a, a iron mark a iron cast engine the modern car that's for an older old time Volvo owner he's not so big fan of the aluminium cast engines so for him it is should be the, um, the kind of the engine in iron cast and as I said, the, the frame, that was the possibility to make uh, cars at the time. And even though the, the um, cabin of a truck, even into the mid-50s, when you're talking about Volvo trucks, it is a, a, a made around a tree construction and wood construction. And uh, uh, Volvo has bought up in North Sweden a company called Nyströms, before they were making cabins. And that was the first manufacturing of cabins in Sweden, making it in steel. And, and of course, Volvo was very keen of that company to make business to, together. And then later on, Volvo is buying this company because uh, one of the catchwords for Volvo is uh, safety. So therefore, it was very interesting to, to buy that company up in Swe uh, up north of Sweden. It was not on this island. But more or less everything else is um, poded <laughs> once upon a time. Uh, the bus actually is not the, the main uh, vehicle at the time, but we, we had some vehicles even though in the end of the 20s. But um, buses uh, um, entered the, the portfolio in the mid-30s actually. But you can see this small truck over there. There is uh, the vehicle who saved Volvo into the future. Uh, you can load that uh, truck with 1,500 kilo. It was so important for uh, delivering uh, milk, wood, whatever, from a s small village or, or out into the countryside again. And you bought a vehicle and you can earn money when you use it. Uh, vehicles like this is um, it's, uh, for a private person, private family. It's very expensive. So. This is the, um, the vehicle who saved Volvo into the future. But once upon a time, um, 1951, this is the year of grace when, um, uh, when, when you are uh, manufacturing uh, more cars in, in value than um, and, and, and from the trucks business. And I will soon tell you when we're entering the, the, the 30s and the 40s, which car it actually uh, is so important for Volvo that the invoice is bigger uh, than the trucks. 1951 is like um, 25 years later. And actually, the, in the 30s, a lot of company was manufacturing, uh, tried to manufacture vehicles in Sweden. It's the only two companies survived uh, this uh, uh, experience period. That was Scania, Vabis, and Volvo. And both are manufacturing, in the beginning, trucks. And Scania Vabis is still around manufacturing trucks. Volvo, as you know, you're manufacturing a lot of cars and all construction equipment, whatever. So we will both thank you, the both gentlemen and their, their construction, the engineer who helped them to make a little stronger vehicle. And suddenly they have the, 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 this fantastic little truck you can see here. At the beginning Volvo was sold a complete, 100% um, so um, a truck. Today it is just the, the truck and somebody is doing what you have to use the truck for your business. But in the beginning it was a complete product from Volvo. So please gentlemen we are entering uh, the see the fantastic cars from the 1930s. <coughs> old picture from the uh, historical uh, city center of Gothenburg, where we have the trams today. It was uh, canals, <laughs> water canals. Also, because we had the problem with the clay, you had to transport all the, the water.
Russell. You can see uh, the movies from the US, the gangster movies, uh, fantastic uh, vehicles. Uh, and once, once again, the, the designer of the cars are so uh, look upon each other it's so much. As I said, even today, it's hard to, to see if it's actually a Volvo in front of you. Uh, and when you're talking about the Volvo, it's, you can see the, the um, brake lamps, that's a, the design of them, that is a one way to, to see that you have a Volvo in front of you. And this is the way you can find the, this is the design that the customer wanted, actually. Uh, big lamps, uh, you see all the four wheels. The steps outside the doors, so important. And you see the logo, it's so nice to see. And the name, once again, once again is PV and, and the number series. But you can find on this car, you can see that it stands for TR. This TR stands for traffic. <clears throat> and that is the most important customer. Uh, trucks customer, and this, the next segment is the people who buy a car for use. That is the taxi drivers. And they are, therefore, the, the car who were manufacturing for um, taxi, they're a little more robust built, of course, and then got the name TR instead of PV. 1935, we are talking now, uh, SQF is leaving uh, Volvo. Volvo is up and running, earning money. It's a, a good company. Uh, manufacturing 4,000 vehicles at the time. Uh, 3,000 vehicles are trucks and thousand, around about thousand of them was uh, more or less cars, but most of them were uh, taxi cars, actually. Of course, these were uh, beautiful cars, but they are, I don't know exactly the price, but you can understand it. Even though in the, the mid-30s, it's a lot of money uh, for, for my grandfather to buy a car just for, for fun, or, or to use it for his <coughs> private person. But uh, even though you, in the 30s Volvo got a car called Karaoke, uh, very modern design, steel construction, um, got a nickname Karaoke because uh, Karaoke was a, um, a dance in the mid 30s, very popular dance, and it was also a flirt to, to the South American market, this car. It is not a concept car, it built actually in like 800 uh, cars at the time, all together during the years. But you can see the difference between what, you, what the customer wanted and uh, what Volvo tried to, to present. A very modern car at the time <clears throat> and got a nickname. Some cars got nicknames right from the beginning from the sales uh, team in the portfolio that they, they got uh, the nickname. Uh, you, some of, uh, the, of you took photos from the Amazon. That's the name just for the Scandinavian market, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see a fantastic uh, taxi over there. Uh, seven paying customers uh, coming. You can, of course, earn a lot of money if you have a very big um, Taxi. So even when I was a kid in the, in the 60s, you could see a black taxi. Every, every taxi was black at the time. It was a monopoly at the time. Most companies in Sweden more or less was kind of a monopoly. So you can understand seven paying customers, bringing them back home from, to their families in the Saturday evening. Good, good money. <laughs> Sometimes we got the question uh, if we are uh, the owner of all the cars. Most uh, car is uh, in a way uh, owned by Volvo uh, and then the two companies, by the way, IB Volvo and Volvo Cars is dividing the, this museum. To, so they are, are own, uh, this, the owner of this museum altogether. But back to the vehicles. This is the vehicle, our Swedish king. It, this is a private car of his, uh, got a good garage through the years, but um, our Swedish king and his family has a, Öland is a one big island, we have two big islands in the Baltic Sea, and Öland is one of them, and there have uh, our Swedish king and his family uh, residence, and they have an old-timey race each 
every second year because it was uh, 2021 and now two, just for some weeks ago our Swedish king and his um, queen threw this old timer race around Erland with we had like 10 cars and then also other vehicles coming up to this um, old timer race what's called rally in Swedish so they, he got it as a present. It, the car is from 1946 when the Swedish king was born. And he got it as a present when he was 50 years anniversary from his good friends. So they had a, you fixed this ship shape, this car, and gave him it as a present. So uh, during the years, um, some two, three weeks in the end of the summer, it's, it's, we are, he has it driving it in, in Öland. Now I will tell you what the PV stands for, the passenger van. And the, if you're told your friends you have once upon a time have uh, owner of a PV, and um, then I would say you <coughs> have this is the car. Uh, presented uh, in 1944, right in the middle of the Second World War. Both the gentlemen, of course, thought that the terrible Second World War should end somehow. So this is a kind of a bridge oh, to hope and a future, better future. Um, costed exactly the same of money as the first car, uh, 500 euro. It was like a gimmick because the car was more expensive to build actually. But 500 euro, that was a, like a gimmick. And it was not possible to you uh, for myself, once again, once again, my grandfather to, or father to buy this car, he had just to sign a contract. And then 1947, after the Second World War and some years later, it was possible to, to hold on the, on the wheel, steering wheel and bring it back to your family. A laminated front window, that was something new at the, at the time. Once upon a time, uh, it was one of the kind of first safety uh, image from Volvo at the time. And, and they were thinking about it to, pr um, to produce, uh, manufacturing 8,000 uh, PV in, in this uh, <coughs> construction. It ended up with 200,000. So this is the car who changed the invoice from trucks to cars. Well, that's the year of grace is 1951. This uh, installation is so fantastic, I think, because it could be me and my brother at the time. Uh, the car is it's like a family member at the time. And my father and mother took us on a summer ride. Uh, and we, the playground was around the car. And my mother fixed a picnic, a coffee or sandwich or whatever. And we didn't tent uh, in, our, uh, in our family. But stopped the car, picnic and playground around the car. And today we pick, we're parking our car up in the close to the road and we're walking three, four kilometers to a lake or a mountain or what a good view. So the car is somehow a little more different than it was once upon a time. Yeah. It was more, more a family member at the, uh, if you're talking about a standard vehicle, of course. So in generation two, uh, you can see the next car over here on, the, on your the second in the row that was the also PV generation two. So all together, generation one and two, nearly 500,000 cars. Was, of course, this is fantastic. This is a <coughs> kind of Volvo, but it's an independent um, body frame builder in Sweden. It got a lot of companies in Sweden uh, taking uh, the, the chassis from Volvo and did some fantastic small cars, um, ambulance and transport cars. Somehow somebody did a vehicle here, a convertible here. In the entrance you can see maybe the most beautiful Volvo ever. It was made of to um, a rich woman in Stockholm, one of the kind. You can see in the end of this uh, tour. Yes, uh, <clears throat> so. Uh, but through the Asagobel saw the business through small ambulances and through transport vans, he got the idea that our idea, we are selling this car to our customers. And then you can imagine that was the name Duet. I will soon show you the, it got the nickname from the very beginning. Duet stands for two cars in one. My father used it in the weeks in business 
and in the weekend he took his fiancée or his family and, and make a picnic with, with them. I would soon present you the, the duet. <clears throat> Uh, behind me here, we have the um, picture of a um, private car for Selma Lagerlöf. She is a Nobel Prize winner in literature, but she is also on the barric barricades to make it possible for our f women in Sweden to, uh, to have the voting right. It is 100 years ago, so <clears throat> we have also a very young democracy, democracy in Sweden. So this is where, once upon a time, her own private car. <clears throat> I think in English you say suffrage, um, the female uh, voting right. Uh, suffrage, yes. Suffrage, yes. Yeah. Mm. So she was one of the ladies who fight for this, this right, actually. Mm. So we're entering the end of the uh, 50s. <coughs> Right, this is the end of the 50s <laughs> and 60s. So we have a kind of a, <clears throat> a line through this museum. A uh, sports car, this was the, the end of the era of Asa Gabelson and Gustav Larsson. They had a, uh, this small sports car convertible, actually you saw. As you see, only 67 uh, car was built. Uh, but now we have uh, mentioned director Gunnar Engelow entering the scene. And Gunnar Engelow said no more business because it was hard to sell this uh, vehicle, this convertible. You have to wait to the C70 many, many years later. <laughs> but he said yes to the P1800. And um, P1800 was... Um, they gave the possibility to an Italian design company to make this P1800. But uh, in this company was a small, uh, a young, not small, a young engineer, designer called Pelle Petson, a Swedish young guy. He is the designer. So when the car was uh, ready for sale in the 60s, in the beginning of the 60s, uh, the, the Volvo didn't... Uh, highlight his name because it was more more uh, cheeky to sell, uh, more challenging to say it was an Italian company who had designed this beautiful car. This is a kind of icon of for, for Volvo, a super design, I think, even today. So in the 61 was the first car was launched, cost 2,000 uh, euros, um, roundabout. But in the same time, that is the most fantastic what's happening right now. In, in the 60s, from 62 to 69, it was an English uh, TV company shooting uh, uh, Simon Templer. It is, um, he, Simon Templer, as a character, was a British, very gentleman. He was a kind of Robin Hood figure, uh, adventure, um, a womanizer, had always a good looking woman on his uh, right side. So, uh, and he, he was the, um, the character was played, or oh, Sir Roger Moore, you can see a fantastic photo over there. He played Jens Bond for many years, uh, for many times, many, many years later on. But Simon Templer, 180 episodes. Um, we had one TV channel in Sweden at the time. You can see me as a young boy. It was the most good thing, the most exciting thing to look upon was Simon Templer at the time. Of course, this English uh, TV company asked, of course, Jaguar if they could provide them with the E-Type at the time. But how, I don't know why Jaguar said no to that uh, idea to pro provide them with P1800. And Volvo had the possibility to sell three cars through, during these uh, years to this TV company. It's, today you have to provide them with two suitcases with 100% uh, money. <laughs> that is kind of different at the time. So, and this car you actually you see behind you here, gentlemen, it is um, Sir Roger Moore's private uh, car. We got that as a testament through when he passed away 2017, like. Uh, and this is the, his private P1800. 
A uh, lot of Pi 1800 went over, of course, to US, but somehow um, we are bringing Yankee cars to Sweden and we are bringing back also a lot of Pi 1800 uh, and making them ship shape and super. We, you can understand for us, one year ago we had a, this is car is 60 years, a fantastic car, 60 years old. So we had a, a, our own six, P1800 and we have borrowed a lot of P1800. So we had like 12, 15 different P1800 during this period. So it was, it was a, like a very good exhibition. Altogether, 50,000 cars together with the ES. In the end, it was kind of, both of them were manufactured and you had the possibility to have the golf uh, clubs with you. But if you can see the neck rest on the two um, seats in the front here, it is um, actually like this Gunnar Engelau's wife is working at a big hospital here in Sweden, in Gothenburg, and she saw all the neck uh, problems for, for road accidents. So he actually told her husband over the, in the coffee, in the kitchen back home, you have to do something. So very early, Volvo is presenting a, a car with a neck rest. This car divides, we who loves P1800, of course, somebody loves this. Yeah, and uh, this 50%. 50% there and 50% there. It's, they're, both, uh, they're both beautiful. They are, they are beautiful. beautiful. This, is just, this is a lot more quirky and unique. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I love it. I think it's a cool, cool car. And now, once upon a time, when Asab Gabrielson saw the business where they bought a chassis from Volvo and did small caravans, small ambulance, whatever they did, and then Asab Gabrielson said, this is my idea, our idea. And he presented a duet. Two cars in one. This is the most beautiful car uh, at the time, 53, it was launched. And now Volvo is uh, selling, uh, in, make the segment, uh, estate wagon. So this is the kind of car so important for Volvo. Uh, today we are talking about cross country, but something different. But up to year 2000, Volvo is one third of all Volvos is uh, estate wagon. Uh, so important segment for Volvo. Even though in the, somehow in the British racing um, tour, Volvo were racing with a, a state wagon at the time. Just to, to tell them that we are the best car uh, deliverer company to making fantastic cars. But they were not the winner. The car was not the kind of a winner, but it was kind of a uh, statement. Fantastic car, P1800, maybe the most beautiful car in the Volvo history. And of course made it possible for 400, 400 million people who saw the Simon Templar in 80 countries. You can imagine that this, this is kind of an uh, icon, of course, number one. But the jewel in the crown, I will present you a little later. This car, of course, is not what we have to uh, provide the market because we as customers we would like to have a, a more safety car. So even though they are beautiful and the very old people coming to this museum, they had a, have owned this and they loved it at the time. But into the future, Volvo has to provide the market with a, a better car. So our commitment to a safety car, it of course is the one for old. And now we are selling a car over one million uh, car is manufactured once 1.1 or something like that. Uh, the front and the, the rear is absorbing. Um, that was the kind of what's very important in this in the in when this car was launched in the uh, mid 60s. Better locks. Uh, the rod is divided, so you got, didn't have to got the, the steering wheel right into your face. Of course, it's very important. Uh, later on, it was also uh, possible to buy this car with the, the safety belt. So, 140, of course, very important for Volvo. And now we, my father got four weeks paid uh, vacation, and uh, he put his family in, in tour here, and we got to the former Yugoslavia or Italy, so we didn't stay put in Sweden anymore because we had more four weeks paid vacation for my father was so important. So of course, 
to the sun as quick as possible. And then you have the one for oh, car because um, it was more or less uh, it's starting to have one car in one family, even though the PV was kind of a starter. It's in the 60s, it was rushing where much families had got a car of their own. But <clears throat> uh, behind you here, you have a, the generation two of the PV. In August 1959, it was the first car ever in the world sold with a 3.7 belt to a family in the South Sweden. By, by the way, also black PV, but what the, it was safety belts. Uh, the law in Sweden is much, much later because the safety belt is uh, launched in 1959. Uh, we have belt uh, over the hips or over the chest, but what Volvo's engineer did, they put them together and got the three-point safety belt. And ten years later, we got the roller belt, that is kind of invasion in the business who are manufacturing the three-point safety belt. Uh, and the, of course the roller belt is better. My father was bigger than me when I borrowed his car. I didn't change the, the three-point safety belt. So it was, um, it was then and still is the most um, important patent ever in an automobile business, of course, maybe ever for saving lives, uh, of course, in the automobile business. Now you can find safety belts in, in all, more or less in all vehicles and all five seats in the, in the car. So, and the, the most fantastic thing, what Volvo did, it was um, uh, they told the automobile business, uh, the manufacturing business in the, the whole world, please use our three-point safety belt. It costs not a Swedish, Swedish crown or, or a dollar or, or a pound or whatever the account was, it make it, it's free for you to use. If you have a patent in the medical business, you have 10 years time to make good money, but this is the fantastic Volvo dig the opposite. Please use our idea of the three point safety belt. <laughs> so even, even though the, the neck rest is also coming uh, later on, even though the P1800 ES had it. So there was kind of an option at the time. My father, he bought uh, like uh, some merchandise and put them behind my, my mother and his, his seats. You, you put it on to have a big, better neck rest. And you can see the green car over there, that was also the, the estate car. Two, 145, we named it at the time. In 1967, something happened in Sweden in, uh, in September. Okay. We changed the, from, from left to right. And suddenly, we, because we bought, uh, we manufactured all the vehicles. My father was sitting in, in the wrong side of the road, actually, absolutely on the wrong side. And in this September 1967, in the Sunday early in the morning, it, the traffic was stopped, or the trams were stopped, and, and then very slow you can move over your car to the other side. And suddenly, my father was sitting on the right side of the road to drive his car. Uh, it was so fantastic. So, so that's built over there. It's like a history. Super, super interesting. Yeah. Overnight. Overnight, yeah. A lot, lot of work before, uh, trams will have to be changed. Yeah. But our cars, our vehicles, uh, the buses, of course, have to be uh, rechanged a little bit because the door was hitting on the right, uh, wrong side. But our vehicles, we didn't like the English or the Australian. Uh, we had, because we sold, we are selling cars with the, with the, the other kind of um, on the roads traffic. So now you can see uh, the interest of into the next uh, generation of car, it is the 240 series. Uh, my colleague is right there just now. But you can see we have put one car called VESC and we put a lot of safety uh, future in that car. It's the aluminium front, even though in the, in the, in the 240 when it was ready, the, the front is a little smoother. Not like this bench you can sit in and telling uh, tales. <laughs> But once upon a time, it was a very uh, important thing for Volvo to try and to be, make a better safety car in the 140.
So from this concept car, we got the 240. And that is what I call the icon uh, number one. Mm, please. But before we present you the 240s, and uh, we just take a tour outside here, and you can see. <clears throat> Important customers for Volvo, of course, the, the military. Uh, during the Second World War, of course, we couldn't sell cars to f uh, families, uh, but we did vehicles for the defense industry. It was uh, in the Volvo history uh, rather good years actually to, to prevent uh, the defense um, <coughs> industry with vehicles at the time. As I said, the people who, who said um, made a contract of the PV had to wait until 1947 before they got the holding hand on the car. <laughs> and once, once again, the, the taxi, uh, uh, so important customer for, for, for Volvo. So this piece of uh, exhibition is uh, our, our sales, sales to the, the society, of course. Uh, ambulances, uh, police, of course, very important business even today, of course. <clears throat> you can see uh, the the premises of the Lundby factory and see the, the old cars that had manufacturing at the time. <clears throat> so a lot of companies in Sweden have just for some decades uh, it was monopolized the police of course uh, but also the post and the telephones uh, business that were monopolized in Sweden and then they were main manufacturing and they are buying the Duet, a very popular car for their, their business. <clears throat> uh, you have to make it telephones in a box like that. <laughs> now you take a phone and you can phone your friend in the US or Turkey or whatever, it's yeah. no problem at all. So uh, this is the kind of car, the duet was so popular, even though they were stopping selling it to the private persons, uh, they couldn't stop the selling it for the tele or the post or uh, downstairs it was the, the railway business. So they could have the possibility to buy the duet much, much later. <laughs> This typical duet car is used for, um, for young boys, 16 years old, even girls today, uh, or rebuilt them to, to have a vehicle uh, and the speed is maximum to 30 kilometers. And they're up and running around the cities and everybody's asking why. <laughs> but it's the absolutely duet was used for that uh, kind of um, rebuilt car to a youngster car. Uh, of course, you have to be 18 years old to uh, drive a proper car. <clears throat> the, the, the red triangles at the back. Yeah, the exactly. You see they some of them and like the, the way they're built. Mm. Like the, you see the 850 wagon. Now, uh, today the it's... Big rims and just dropped on the ground. Yeah, so and close to the... Uh, uh, across the bridge. And it's but the, in the beginning it was the duet. And now, as I said, uh, they have... Uh, uh, change the, the, the red, the, the red uh, possibility to register a, a standard car, yeah. but they rebuilt it as well. <clears throat> I can't get my head and then it's a red a triangle, and then 30 kilometers. <laughs> they, are, it's a, they sound good too, they, they tune them yeah. and they make them sound really good. <clears throat> so it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. 
one, exactly. One, one thing in the, the, that kind of life, 60 years old and driving a duet or a, a modern car, even though Porsche or Cayenne or whatever, yeah. very big cars as well, but maximum 30 kilometers, and you use the maximum of the music. Dung, dung, dung. Wow. Oh, fantastic car at the Volvo, of course, provided the, the market police, ambulances, the mono monopoly companies in Sweden. <laughs> Before I present you the uh, icon number one, the 240, I will just tell you a little about the history of uh, the Netherlands. Um, Volvo um, sales um, departments around uh, the world, they were asked if they could provide the, the market with a little smaller uh, vehicle, a smaller car. And Volvo st started to go around in Europe on a tour and they were find a company in Born in Duff. It was the name, the name of the company. And uh, there was a joint venture company for, for them in many, many years. And Duff had the Duff 66, and Volvo renamed it to Volvo 66. But the interest from Volvo at the time, because of, well, why they used, uh, chose uh, Duff, it was the 300 series over there, the blue car over there. It was more or less ready to start the production. So it was uh, Duff 77, and Volvo called it uh, Volvo 340 series. And once again, uh, Volvo is selling 1.4 million uh, uh, cars in that shape. So, the, of course, this is the business during more or less 30 years. You can see a sign over there, 2004. And we are leaving in Duff and the company factory born at the time because 1999, when you opened the newspaper here in Gothenburg, the, um, at the time, this. Managing director Leif Johansson, he had decided to sell cars. And you can sell, understand this is the kind of heart of the Volvo. Even though the engineering company, AB Volvo, is at the time a very big company, and one part is the, the car business. And for us, private persons, of course, this is the heart of the business. What is happening on, for us in Gothenburg, all the employees, it's a very. Many people are working here at the plants. Uh, it got 15, uh, in Swedish crown, 50 milliard, or uh, five billions, oh, whatever, a lot of money. Ford Motor, Comp Motor Company paid a lot of money for to, to hand uh, the business to Volvo cars at the time. And they, they stayed put in Gothenburg, so thank God they didn't leave. But you can understand what is happening on this island. Uh, even though Ford Motor Company is the, the, it's selling uh, the business in 2004 because at the time it was kind of Mitsubishi, uh, not Duff, on the other side of this joint venture business. So how, somehow Volvo is leaving the business from the Netherlands. <clears throat> And the, uh, the, this is the kind of car from uh, front wheel drive, the very first ever at the time, because Volvo had a Galaxy uh, project, a joint venture project, uh, <clears throat> with the later on 1850 made in Sweden and the 400 series made in Netherlands at 1.7 billion euros at the time. It's a venture, um, industry venture, very expensive for Volvo, of course. Of course. And from this Galaxy, uh, 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 we can launch the 480 series. This was kind of a testing car for the new future for front wheel drive. And later on, the 440, 480 series were coming from the factory in Bonn. And in Sweden, we have the 850. We will show the 850 soon. So this is a kind of era, uh, more or less 30 years altogether. But if you, as you know, uh, if you ask if this big, big factory is in use today, yes, uh, BMW is uh, using it for the Mini, the fact manufacturing the Mini in this uh, uh, factory. 
No, I mean, gentlemen, this is the uh, red car for the managing director, the most popular managing director, uh, P.G. Julenhammer. He is a photo of him over there. He is a kind of king in Gothenburg. He is very popular in the plants, of, of the car plants here in Gothenburg. Kind of boss who entered the scene every morning and went around the uh, factory before he got up to his office. It's, that's what the history tells us. So he is, he is very popular boss in, in many years. Red car as an official car in his business should be challenging, nerve and cheeky. That was the kind of why he chose the red car at the time. And also you see the interior should also be red. So backstage here at the Volvo Museum we had a lot of red car. Uh, we had for some years ago uh, uh, exhibition with more or less all his red car, very beautiful uh, red red car. 240 Icon is um, number one, of course. Same car in 19 years. 2.8 million car was built. Uh, one third of them were uh, estate cars. Um, it's, a, it's a legend in his in his own lifetime. This car. Uh, this car. Two small facelifts during this year. One is the front and one small in, in the interior. But more or less 19 years, that is fantastic to build one car during, because a, a lot of factories around the world using the same name, but the, the, uh, the frame or is ever, the sh chassis, everything is changed, but the name is, th is still around. You don't have to name it. But th this is the fantastic car. Uh, robust built, uh, very popular around the world. It's today kind of a hipster car. Mm -hmm. So do you find 245 and the rust is not having uh, the winner, you buy it and use it into the future. <laughs> And even though this is a kind of turbo at the time, of course, uh, the first company ever with a turbo engine uh, it was Saab, the other Swedish vehicle uh, production company in Sweden. But it's not around anymore. They had the first car with, with a turbo. And of course, the Audi, Mercedes and Volvo, everybody, whoa, we have to do something. <laughs> so, but if a Volvo is this, um, a, a fantastic. Iconic. I can't again. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I choose the color, but not possible for me to, to buy it because you can just change a little bit of color, then it is a PG uh, color. He, he left the company rather alone, by the way. Uh, uh, the, the other directors on, this, on the office and in the board, they were not. They were not so compatible together anymore, so he left the company. It's sad to say, very alone, actually. He's an old gentleman living in, uh, living in London today. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Somehow the two doors, of course, designed in Italy. Uh, not Pelle Peterson at this time. <laughs> This kind of uh, car was designed by Bertondo. Uh, premium cars, uh, Volvo uh, direction, uh, northwest direction, they say it, it is in the premium cars. We are not manufacturing small cars in, in, a, in a big, big series. So that is not kind of, of course, I will. Interesting to selling cars, of course, but not like uh, other companies in the world are better to sell uh, a mass production of, of a car. Mm. Uh, we had a, a young boy coming to uh, um, in the 50s, in the beginning of the 1950s, uh, John Wilskord. He is later on chef designer of the Volvo, and his car is one Amazon, is number one. Uh, and Amazon is something how big, big different what is later on is. Uh, telling us 140 and 240 and 700. They are very, uh, like a big, big box. But the car, first car ever, it was uh, actually the Amazon because it was a female uh, design actually. Of course, therefore they got the name Amazon. Uh -huh. 
Uh, I told you before that Amazon was just used in the Scandinavian market because in, uh, in Germany it was a company, motorbike company, uh, manufacturing motorbikes. He told them you can't use that name in, uh, uh, in Europe because it was registered on his company. So, so if you go to Australia, uh, to Austria, Switzerland, whatever, you, you have to tell them you have an Amazon. They don't know what you're talking about. Uh, John Wilskud is uh, uh, designing cars up to the um, 1850s when he is going to pension. He is the car he was most proud of, of them all, is 760, 740. At the time it was very interesting to do, have wind tunnels when you design your car. But um, uh, John Wilskud said, no, 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 no wind tunnel for me, please. And this is a, what he called the tuxedo. He called the 100, 240s for the suit. But this is the tuxedo. He was most proud of them. Like, just to know. We did uh, at the time um, five uh, concept cars and moved them around the world to the dealers. And then when the dealer had decided which car should be in the future, it was the 700 series. And John Wilsko had told the Volvo people why the fuss to transport a lot of cars around the world. I know it, it was my car which, which is the winner. So just for show that is this 740, 760 uh, he was most proud of. <clears throat> but in the end he was well, the designer of the 1850. Um, comp as this uh, Galaxy project, uh, 850 is um, the number one in that um, Galaxy project. Five cylinder transversely mounted engine here, uh, aluminium cast engine, now we are talking about aluminium. And um, the set rear uh, axle, now we are providing the market with front wheel drive. And Volvo also had something called SIPS, Side Impact Protection System, uh, construction to absorb the, the uh, problem if uh, you have a, a hit from the, this is the weakest point of the car. Uh, up to Volvo prevented them, um, launched this SIPS and together with the uh, airbags as well. Sound from this engine was uh, fantastic. Oof, very oh, now you're talking. Very now we're talking. And the front wheel drive made the, the road um, holding uh, excellent. It was outstanding as well. For me, it was possible to, a salesman, uh, to buy this car. This was something else. This is some, absolutely something special. Uh, small series in the beginning, 2,500 cars, like in yellow, black or green, and uh, then, then later on it was possible for uh, guys with the normal uh, pocket <laughs> to buy cars that were very expensive in the beginning. It was kind of an idea to prevent the market with, for, for the tough guys in the beginning, and then later on uh, it was... You, so this car, 1850s, it was soon renamed to 70. Volvo has renamed the series. Uh, and it is now in the, in the mid-1990s. So this is uh, very soon S70 on V70. And now with a lot of plastic, bigger wheels, Volvo is entering a, a segment called XC, cross-country. So the small steps in, in that direction, in that um, Brand new uh, segment. It is for Volvo's deal. is a X, a v, XC70 or V70 XC in the beginning. But this car uh, is later on, um, up to 2016, very important car, the XC70. But in the uh, millennium um, 2000, 2002, Volvo is providing the market, launched the two, uh, XC90, and it is absolutely a success. So now we are talking not Vesality cars as before, now we are talking XC cars. And one third of all vehicles today is in XC60s. Um, we are, I saw the top list for the car for last year. Uh, uh, XC60s on the 70 spot on that list. A lot of Toyotas and Tesla up here, and uh, Ford, of course. But on the 70 plus, uh, point, it was an XC60. Nearly 200,000 cars was built. 
<coughs> Maybe. It was one car where we were not first in the segment, but we were Mercedes Benz ML. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, we were based at the same time. So mm. it makes a difference when you actually enter mm. the segment. The small, small steps is the uh, XC17, also this car, uh, and then uh, it's the boom with the XC90. And now we are talking about the cost country cars all over the. Uh, 30, 40, 60, 70, and even the, the 100, the electric, uh, the recharged car is called um, also kind of XC cross country car. Before, before you were born, <laughs> when, when these were, when these, I was a young whippersnapper working in Volvo Car Australia, and we did the press event with, with these cars. Yeah. And, uh, I think I was born. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I, was I, I, I remember driving the, 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 when I first came, came out, driving them mm -hmm. in the high country of Australia. Super yeah. success. Amazing, uh, amazing car. <gasps> T6 and a 2.5 turbo, mm -hmm. all drive, seven seats. I think Ford Motor Company got some money back through this car. Uh, uh, your colleague is uh, taking photos from uh, what is uh, the Lambda on the little piece over there. Uh, it was a kind of um, a problem for uh, all over the world, but of course the, the, um, the, uh, they asked for it. It was the South um, California market, the state of California. They asked to have to do something for the, the um, pollution from cars. And with this uh, little lambda sound, you can reduce the harmful gases with 90%. Volvo take a 240 car, drew it from California up to the White House and said to the US market, we have uh, the product what you need. This is uh, 76 um, and it have to be connected with, um, um, with the petrol um, light motors. And together with the, the exhaustion that we are reducing the harmful gases with 90 percent. So many years ago, but what did, why didn't we do the rest of 10 percent? Why didn't the engineer doing 100 uh, percent so all harmful gases is gone from the cars? But the answer of that is that we have recharged cars today. So that, the answer is we are making some complete different uh, how we drive our cars what kind of engine we are using in the, in the future. But uh, at the time, 90% reducing that, of course, very important business. So you find three-point safety belts in all cars, all vehicles, more or less, in the world. And you can also find a Lambda sound in many, many vehicles all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going down uh, here. You see racing cars. Um, uh, you can see a lot of uh, one-off one cars. Uh, so we are going down to the Volvo Penta port. <laughs> no more racing. Uh, no more golf, no more sailing around Volvo Ocean Race uh, around the world. It is, uh, that concept is sold to a Spanish company, I think. Uh, but you, of course, can race with a Volvo car, but that not in Volvo's uh, business anymore. The big airplane over here, it is, of course, the engine once upon a time. Outside Gothenburg, we had a Volvo Aero. Uh, the company and they are manufacturing even though today, but it's a US UK company today. Which year? Uh, the engine for this uh, airplane. Which year for the plane? Which Pardon? Year? Which, when? which year? When, when, uh, when, when, when we sold that company. Oh, how, uh, how old is the plane? Oh, yeah. that is not so old actually. Hmm. 15 years so maximum. <gasps> The, the, uh, the airplane is uh, manufacturing at the company called Saab. They were not only building uh, vehicles, they were building uh, airplanes as well. So the Saab plane Saab. with a Volvo mm. power plant yeah. in it. The, 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 Vigan is a, the, the Vigan is an iconic plane, yeah? Mm. You, you read about this and, and some of the interceptions it's done. Mm. Even on the SR-71 Blackbird, it's, it's an impressive plane. Crazy so we're going down the, this to the ground floor. Mm -hmm.
We have two of these 480, one red and one blue. They were not sold. Our managing directors at the time got cold feet uh, for the technical, for the safety. Somehow they did, in my point of view, a very beautiful car actually. Uh, but in the end, uh, before releasing it, it, somehow they stopped it. <clears throat> but they are uh, in good shape. So, and they, Rally for the old time rally for our Swedish king. We had the red one over there. So, <clears throat> so they, most of the car is very good shape on this museum. This was long, it was the show from this car is ex exactly the time when the Mazda Miata uh, was launched in uh, in the world, and everybody knows what Mazda did for for the sports cars. <laughs> owners in the world. It was super success. Uh, behind me here you can see a car uh, made only by 360 women at the time. So they got free hands to make a, a concept car and they ended up with the ICC. And um, what can you tell about this car is that the, the bonnet is closed. It was only possible to add water and petrol. And by the way, when did you open your bonnet back home? Maybe you have to add some water. But at this point of view from the ladies here, they decided to even, the bonnet is open by the, the, the technical, the service people. The threshold is uh, tilted like this. And the, the, this door is like a swing up like a, a wings. Mm. And the interior, you can easily change it if you have, um, when you, the, the th idea was you have to have a different kind of interior back home in the garage. You can easily change it. And if you have a horse tail, a lot of women have a lot of horse uh, tail, it, it, the uh, neck rest is divided. That was the kind of idea. And I have got the question for many ladies today of why didn't we do that as a standard <laughs> in, even today? <laughs> And once upon a time, uh, Jan Wilskod, he designed this catwalk. This is a kind of uh, very important design for Volvo even today. So, as I said, hold it to see if you see a Volvo in front of you. But if you see the brake lines, you can see it is uh, the line after the idea of the, the catwalk, who is Jan Wilskod's uh, trademark, actually, for Volvos. Everybody asked me. Why don't we for, had started to sell this car? It's so beautiful, actually. It is beautiful. But, uh, the yeah, the I, picture over there is too long. If you are interested, maybe you can uh, hand it over to your gentleman. But it's too long for us to, to uh, look upon it. Mm. It was great PR. Yeah, down the road now you can see the first uh, Axis 90 ever was launched in, in, in Detroit in the US in year 2000. And two years later, that is the big, big black car over there. It's the ACC, Adventure Car, Concept Car, later on XC90. Uh, you are dealing and wheeling with a concept car, but if you're starting to production, you have to be smarter and more economic. So it's a rather big difference from the what they, the show was once upon a time to us to uh, the XC19 actually, but for Volvo so important segment. <clears throat> Uh, trucks business? Uh, I don't know where I would 
I I I'm just going to just yeah, tell cars. a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you have to go to your. Uh, yeah, we, I think we got mm. 20 odd minutes. Yes. So. <gasps> This is later on XC90. Two years later, it was launched. This, this, this one, we, we brought it to Australia and we had it on display. You have it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine they moved it from, uh, from different markets yeah. Yeah. Uh, during that period. Yeah. But back home, the engineer was sitting and, and doing the drawings for the, for the, 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 the actually the XC90 later yeah. but, on. But you have seen it. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, 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 we had a showroom in the middle of Sydney. <gasps> Obviously, it's, there's no engine in this. It's all, oh. all manual. Uh, surely it's... Uh, we, we had to put a, get a tilt tray to bring it in into the showroom. It was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. The X660, they are very similar to what uh, you got later on. Yeah. The, the concept core is very similar to uh, the, the standard X660. <clears throat> In my point of view, this is very close to Polestar number one. Uh, mm. the, the recharged uh, Polestar number one, this, this sports car yeah. made for a show uh, only. You have seen it once uh, here outside the museum. Okay. Um, yeah, you, can't, you can't see it on the roads. There's not many of them. No. And, and the ones you see are predominantly in the... You can maybe uh, see around, in the... Around the VAK. Yeah, uh, in the showroom, for a Polestar showroom maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are entering the, the Volvo Penta. In the beginning, it's a very, very old company from the uh, 1850s. Uh, we've got a long, long name, Chevrolet Mechanical uh, Casting Engine Company. So, but five owners sitting down and rechanged the name to uh, Vol Penta Verkina, so the Penta fabric. And later on, uh, when Volvo entered the scene to be a 100% owner, Volvo changed it to just Penta. Penta means five. Uh, once upon a time, it was five owners. And they were manufacturing in small, small engines. When uh, Volvo started the idea to manufacturing uh, vehicles, uh, it was Penta who was providing Volvo with the small engine you saw in the beginning. So Penta have been a very good partner and later on, as I said, Volvo is buying the company. And Volvo Penta is using the engines for different purposes, not only trucks and buses or cars. Uh, they're using it on the hospitals, military uh, plants, uh, big offices. You have to have a priority when you have electricity. You have to have a big diesel engine downstairs to start, as you can understand, in, in, a, in a big, big hospital, a lot of uh, departments, what you can say, have to have to have electricity just right yeah. on the second. But uh, as I said, Volvo Penta is also a big, big company when you're talking about uh, power boats, uh, private boating, uh, because in 1959 there was a young boy coming from the US with an uh, idea outside the box. Uh, you have the possibility to steer the, uh, and also together with the plastic uh, boats. We have wooden uh, boats before, now we have to building our power boats or our private boating with uh, in plastic and also together with this brand new idea the engine inside and outside outdoor you have the steering engine from the steering part in in the, in the car and in the vehicles and in the boat uh, Volvo saw the potential of this business and he, it was not named from the uh, engineer, from the man who got the, had the patent together when he entered the, here in Gothenburg. But Harald Vico, mentioned directly for Volvo Penta, saw the possibility to make good business with this kind of uh, steering of the modern boating. <clears throat> 
And they, it's this, the history says that the uh, aquamotic is the name. It was very close to what we're drinking here in Sweden, aquavit. If they did it at the same time, I don't know. But it, this, this story tells us the aquamotic name is coming from the aqua uh, the liquor. <laughs> <gasps> uh, just for show, this is the part of uh, the trucks. But we have something more to, to tell you. Uh, AB Volvo uh, is the very, at least the biggest engineering company in Sweden, even though they once upon a time they sold the car business. So, and Vol AB Volvo, 60% is, uh, of course, through the truck business. So, you have to understand it's a very, very big company, AB Volvo, and 110,000 employees all over the world. Volvo Cars has like 25, 30,000 employees. Like. No, something like that, yes. And uh, all together we are working on 200 markets uh, all over the world. So uh, the, once upon a time we launched the, the OP, OV4, Open Van 4, and, and, and then it just grow and grow and grow. From this little island, <laughs> this is a small island, so. Um, we are um, th through uh, the modern trucks. And the management director at the time, he bought uh, some markets, U.S. factories in, in other markets in Sweden, because Sweden was just, uh, the trucks from Sweden, from Volvo, is more or less a Scandinavian, European market at the time. But with the new money pocket he got, a lot of money, he bought uh, uh, new markets and new factories around the world. Uh, of course, for U.S. market, is a North American market, so important. Uh, we're going outside here, please, gentlemen. <laughs> had you have also have, have you also seen the the Lego in uh, Australia Lego car? Uh, I've seen it in the here. Uh, of, of course. Um, Super nice. It was Lego in US built with 200,000 uh, standard pieces uh, XC90. You can't move it, but uh, not drive it. No. So it's like a show at the time. And now we have haven't been on our museum for many years. This concept car, once upon a time, 1977, it was uh, electrified uh, just for show. We built some cars, but. It's interesting from the history at the time. What you can say about the, the automobile business, they were very, um, they didn't have happened so much during many, many years. But today, all companies, even Volvo, of course, on AB Volvo, is proactive when you're talking about recharged engines. So just outside the, the plant here in Gothenburg, we are building a, a big, big plant for just making the batteries for the future. And the goal uh, for uh, uh, Volvo cars is 100% should be uh, recharged 2030. And when you're talking about uh, AB Volvo, so trucks and buses, it is 50% 2030. And then we have the, the big question, autonomous uh, drive. We have a big, big uh, harbor for containers down just out, very close to where we are today, uh, upstreams a little bit. 101 million uh, containers we are dealing and wheeling with, and they, they transported with the Volvo trucks without any uh, driver. Okay. So, and of course, autonomous drive in, in a harbor or a fenced area. Of course, in the mining industry, Volvo construction equipment, we have a lot of uh, recharged or autonomous drive in the, the mining industry up north in Sweden. But for me, as a private person driving my XC90, autonomous, sitting in my, drinking coffee, morning paper, it is um, in the future. Because I think it's so much have to be connected in the, of course, for the safety, but this whole society have to be connected in the other way. Well, if you buy an XC90 or whatever from Volvo, you have a lot of pilot assist, you bliss, and, yeah. and a camera above your head. Uh, you have so much. So the, the engineer have, are helping you a lot what you get for the, your money when you're buying a modern car, of course. That is, it's true. <clears throat> but uh, the normal drive, <laughs> maybe. 
we are testing, uh, of course. Or, or also, pardon? The first electrical wall? This one? This, once upon a time, it was kind of test. I see. Uh, 10 hours charge, so uh, recharge. the first time when you tried electric? Pardon? The first time when you tried yeah. to do an electric propulsion system? Like a okay. test. Then, it, many, many years before, they were actually, as today, proactive. So the automobile business, whatever, trucks, buses, and uh, cars, now everybody is proactive. So we have uh, one more stop before we are cl close this uh, tour. This is kind of monopoly as well, the railways uh, company in Sweden we call it SG. So, uh, the, the monopoly company I told you before, they are, they are, uh, they are not around anymore, <laughs> like, b like before of course, they are still around but uh, in under shape. Now my gentlemen, we have lost some. <laughs> Absorbing. They're but absorbing the, the, the Lego. Lego, yes. Lego means, in your language, play good. Uh, in Swedish, lek gott. As a play uh, uh, nicely or Lego. It's not the name, it's a very private owned company in Denmark, so they didn't use their family name or whatever, okay. which where one, many people are starting a company with, with a surname and, a, and Whatever, but they have Lego, Lake, play well in English. That's the name. No, I never, I never, I never no. knew it was an abbreviation. No. So in Swedish, Lake Gott, also in the Scandinavian language, Lake Gott. Uh, it's a rumor all over the town. It's sad to say it's true. Uh, we are closing this, not planning, we are actually closing this museum down in the end of this year after nearly 30 years, as I said before. Uh, so uh, we are preventing the Sweden and the both Volvo companies, AB Volvo and Volvo Cars, a brand new uh, building, as you said, very close to the amusing park, in, in, right, very close to the city center. Um, and we rename it to Word of Volvo, at this, only for these two Volvo companies, uh, not Polestar or whatever. Uh, you have dealing and wheeling in it's Sweden. No. So, uh, as I said, Vo AB Volvo and Volvo cars. The idea from the architect is should be like a tree coming from the, the, the mountain and, and, and racing like this, um, in wooden construction with a lot of glass. A uh, very big building, 22,000 square meters actually. Um, but the museum part is smaller than this. So we don't put this museum all together in a box and moved it into the city center. So what happened next year, and we opened this uh, Vol Void of Volvo 14th of April. Uh, so this is a kind of a statement, once again, the same as we launched the first car ever for 20, 1927. Something special, uh, of course, restaurants. Uh, you can have this famous Swedish fika. Uh, one part is, of course, the, the museum part, but what actually how it will be in the future, we actually don't know. We, we guide. Are we, are, need, are we needed in the future? No, you're always oh, always thank you very much. You have to do some phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> so the future is word of all was something completely different from what you have seen today. So it had been my pleasure to guide you through this museum right. and uh, the, all the work we have seen. Not so much the trucks, but the importance of trucks and buses, you understand, for Volvo, the companies, so important. So thank you once again. Uh, thank you.
My pleasure. Have a good stay in Sweden and Gothenburg. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate good... it.